So you want to build a custom downfiring subwoofer enclosure. But the problem is, if it's going under the seat of a vehicle, you need to add an angled top. How can we make this complex cut when we use a stack fab profile? How did I build this custom subwoofer enclosure? Let's get on into it. So the very first thing that I needed to do to get this build started was to come up with an envelope of what will actually fit under the seat. So I measured the height at the rear of the seat, the height at the front of the seat, which gives me this angle here. I measured this depth, and then I, of course, measured and recorded how wide the enclosure could be across the vehicle. That led me to creating this design. I like to do everything on the computer because then I can do precise volume calculations inside for the internal airspace, and I can also come up with some of my different shapes for the insert geometry that I'm gonna use on the front here for the different sponsor logos. It also allows me to come up with a lot of these dimensions here you don't have to use a computer, but for me, it just makes the process a lot easier to have a plan up front. So let me explain what's gonna happen here. This is from a previous project, but in the corners of the enclosure, we want to round it over like that. So we're gonna be stacking up the wood a little something like this. I'm gonna be using a slightly smaller radius for this enclosure. I'm using a five inch radius. So this is going to be like this at the front of the enclosure. And I know that I need a certain height at the front of the enclosure, and I only have certain thicknesses of wood to work with so I had to kind of come up with a stack that will give me my total seven and a half inches. To make things even more complex, one of these layers is actually going to be the baffle. The baffle is the piece that will have the cutout holes for the subwoofers to actually mount into. These subwoofers are gonna be down firing, they'll be facing down, and you can kind of see the layer right here. So one of these stacked layers will actually be part of the baffle and it's going to be at a two inch height. So I had to come up with a half inch layer, two three quarter inch layers, and then this three quarter inch layer will be the baffle. I then did the math to figure out that the rest can be three quarter inch layers, and then at the top I'm gonna to have two half inch layers. I always think it's a really good idea to come up with a masterpiece like this. Number one, you can check its fitment in the vehicle, make sure that everything is copacetic right there. And number two, we can start planning out our cuts. Let me show you what I mean. So I flipped my board over from before and what I've done here, I know that I want the front of the enclosure to be seven and a half inches. That's not including the top cap that's going to go on. I'm more concerned about my stack height. So I marked out seven and a half inches, made a point there. And then in the back, I know that I need it to be four and a half inches. So I marked that point and I used a straight edge to connect the two lines. Next up, I know that these quick corners have a five inch radius. It's gonna be something like that, obviously in this orientation, but I measured from here over to here, that's five inches and drew that line. And then on the back here, this is going to be the actual back of the enclosure. It's gonna be made out of three quarter inch thick wood. So I took a scrap piece of three quarter inch, lined it up at the outside and made another line. So what I've done here is I've now created the exact geometry that I need for this side piece. I don't have to do any crazy algebra or anything to determine you know, what this distance is actually going to be or what this distance is. I was able to easily just measure those offsets and draw in real time. So now I can take my measurements and transfer this to a new piece of wood. So that first cut I made is this dimension from here to here, as you can see. Now I wanna show you guys a super cool table saw trick to cut this angle here. I got this angle marked out by measuring this distance and this distance and marking those out and then connecting the lines with a ruler. But what we're gonna do now is I have this piece that I've already made. This piece I've already ran through the table saw at a known distance of 9.5 inches here on the fence. Now, because I've already cut this piece on the table saw, I know that if I run it through again, it's not gonna cut this piece, but the blade is gonna ride perfectly right on this edge. So what I can do is I can apply some double-sided template tape to my new piece here. I can flip it over and line it up with that line. Here it is, boys and girls. Now I've got this piece here. 
can go ahead and see that if we line it up, it perfectly matches what we've drawn out. So now I'm going to put this aside because I'm gonna be using this later. In fact, this is something that's just kind of handy to always have when you need to cut those angles. But now I need to use this guy here and start making my stack. I take one of the quick corner templates and I template tape it to a half inch piece of material. I'm going to start from the top and work down. Now don't forget that I said that this piece here is going to be part of the baffle in the enclosure. It's a very wide piece and it's just kind of hard to work with so I don't want to attach it to my stack yet because we're going to have to do this angle cut still. And I want to keep things as small as possible for the time being. So I really only need to make these first couple of layers here but I'm going to do probably about that much. Here at the router, I have a spiral flush trim bit. I'm going to copy this shape. It's very, very important for this first piece that you get it to perfectly match your template. So I recommend that you actually go around multiple times on the router to make sure that you've completely got every extra bit of wood. The reason this is important is this is the first template that we're going to start stacking up and copying multiple times. So we really wanna use care throughout the whole process to make sure that we're completely flush trimmed. Now the reasoning for these holes in this particular template is so that you could transfer those holes to your existing shape. You would make multiple of these and then you could use wood dowels and wood glue to actually attach these together. Another way to do this though, and this is the way that I'm going to do it because I'm on a time constraint, is you can use CA glue. I'll apply CA glue to the actual first template. I apply some of the activator to the raw piece of wood and then I stick the two together. One way isn't necessarily better than the other. The CA glue is extremely strong, but what I like like about it is it's very quick to dry so I can already go ahead and transfer this to the router and flush trim my next layer. And now I have this stack here. This is my floor offset here and then I have my baffle thickness as well. So I've marked that measurement here and I've only made this stack up to that point so far. So I know that I need to take this and line it up like that. Now it looks kind of wonky. You're thinking, hey, why is there that extra material? Well, that's the material that we need to actually cut off as part of this angle. And if you think about this line here extending to the front of the enclosure, we want it to perfectly match up with this front corner here, which if we kind of eyeball it, it looks like we should be good to go. Now this is complex to do, so I determined my setup and did a dry fit first, and then I apply some CA glue to the joints here, and then I stick the two pieces together. I really wanna make sure that the joint between these two is good and strong, so I add another bead of CA glue in this corner here. Now I bust out that same sled that I had made before and once again load it in, matching the angle of my side piece, and then I raise the table saw blade out of the table so that I can cut through as far as possible. Now the saw cut most of the way through, but I still have a little bit that I need to clean up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a scrap piece of wood and stick this in place like so, and then I'm going to attach all of this to another scrap of wood like so. I made this contraption for myself so that I can angle the blade slightly. You can see that it will match up with that cut there. And then I can carefully use the miter gauge over here to make that cutting pass. So there we go, I made this cutting pass, I made this cutting pass, and now I always end up with a little bit of a nib here. I'm gonna just carefully sand that away, no big deal whatsoever. So I repeated that on the other side as well, and you can see that this gives me my angle cut. By carefully lining up the table saw, you can see that it is nice and flat within that plane. Now, like I mentioned, I stopped my layers here because that's where my baffle board is going to go. Now I need to determine how I'm gonna make my cuts on my baffle board because this piece is gonna be a little bit complex. If we look here, I need to make clearance for this board to actually notch into my baffle board. That way the baffle board will extend out to here so that I can just flush trim and copy this existing curve. I also need to make the subwoofer cutout holes, so let's do that.
Got everything laid out, two shallow mount 10 inch subwoofers. I intentionally shifted my mounting hole further this direction because the angle is gonna come up here just to make sure that I have plenty of mounting depth. I should be good to go, but it's not gonna hurt to have them shifted this way just a little bit. And you can see that I've marked out my notches where the vertical boards are going to go here and here. So there we have it, I've made the notches for these vertical boards. And you can see I've rough cut that material there because I'm going to attach this and then I'm gonna flush trim it perfectly on the router. You can also see here that I intentionally left a little bit of extra material, I'll flush trim that off too. Now that that is attached, like I mentioned, I need to trim this away. To do that, I'm using a really tall router bit here. If you didn't have a specialized bit like this, what you could do is make sure that you rough cut really, really close and then you could just come in here with a sander and sand everything flush. So now we're looking good in preparation for these boards that are gonna go on the front and back. I do need to make these last couple of stacks. Let me do those real quick. Whoa, bam, whoa, bam, whoa, bam. Got them made right here, already added and secured. So now we are definitely good to create the front of the enclosure and the rear. Making these pieces was easy enough. Just had my table saw blade adjusted to the right angle, of course, to match this. And then I cut the back piece and cut the front piece. With this being a long span of distance between the subwoofers and for the overall enclosure, there is gonna be a tendency of this area on the baffle to want to flex. So I wanna strengthen this area up by adding a divider between the two subwoofers. This is a mono signal on the subwoofers, so it doesn't need to be a divider. There could be a hole in the center here, but in this case, I've got plenty of airspace and I want this to be as strong as possible. So I'm going to position it in the middle here. I've already obviously cut this dimension and I'm gonna make a mark here and here, draw a line between the two and then use my sled on the table saw like I did before to cut that perfect angle. Now there's one more thing that I wanna do on the inside of this enclosure before I put the cap on and it involves this ring right here. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what this ring is for and why we need it inside the enclosure in just a second here. But really quick, I wanna thank our monthly channel sponsor, Crutchfield. With Crutchfield, you can easily pick the year, make and model of your vehicle along with vehicle specific audio features. Crutchfield has done a ton of research on many different vehicles with many different factory audio systems, and you can see some of their research pictures along with the information you need to know what size speakers to get, what head units will fit, the list goes on. To use the Crutchfield Vehicle Selector and to get a special offer for car audio fabrication fans, check out the link here on screen or down in the video description. Getting back into it, the reason that this ring is important is usually I like to have a double layer of thickness for the subwoofer in this area just because the baffle can become kind of weak with this huge cutout of the center. So what I've done here is using that same template that I used to make the cutout hole, I've made this ring on the router using the flush trim bit. I'm going to attach it inside the box here because it will strengthen this panel a little bit more. And even more importantly, if I need to use long screws like these that came with the subwoofer to secure this into the box, instead of just blowing through the other side of the wood, I have a ton of thickness and it's actually not even gonna come through the other side, making sure that we don't have any air leaks and that we have tons of material to hold this subwoofer in really strong. So now that I have those rings in place, I test mounted the subwoofers up underneath just to make sure everything is good to go. Now I'm not done quite yet because obviously there's going to be a cap on top of the box here and I wanna make sure that the subwoofers can breathe into the open air environment of the vehicle. So I need to make a cutout here 
and a cutout here on both the front and rear of the enclosure. To do this is really simple. I took a scrap piece of wood. I added this 45 degree cut. I made another triangle over here and I'm gonna use these as my templates for on the router. So I'll write against this, this, and this. With these cutouts added, I also added a nice round over on the router. This will give the enclosure more of a finished look at this particular area once I wrap it with carpet. Next up, this is a little unusual to be doing the wiring before we put the cap on, but it's easier this way because this is so shallow I needed to drill a hole here. It would have been really hard to do that once the top was on the box. So I'm gonna do that now and I'm also going to tidy up this wiring with some cable management. To protect the wire from vibrating against the edge of the enclosure, I'm wrapping it with closed cell foam. Once I wrap the wire with the foam, I secure it with some cloth tape and then I secure the whole bundle down using these wire clamps. I was looking at the side of the enclosure here and it's a little too plain for my liking. So what I did is I quickly came up with this shape here just to add some more depth and dimension to each side of the box. I do have some template work to do on the center here for some logos. I'm gonna save that for a different video. Let's get this top on. You can see that of course, since this is cut at a 90 degree angle, that this edge here kind of kicks back. And I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be completely straight up and down. So that's simple enough to make that cut. I'm just gonna do on the table saw. There we go, that looks much better and nice and flush once we attach it. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna take a pencil and on the underside here, I'm gonna mark a line because I'm gonna rough cut this material away using a jigsaw. To secure the top, you guessed it, I add some wood glue and then I use brad nails to attach the top and now you can see that I have everything completely clamped up here. So I've allowed the glue to fully dry and now I've loaded a half inch flush trim bit into my router. And the trick here is I only want the bit out of the table just barely enough to actually cut through this wood. That way the bearing is gonna match up with this point as close to where those boards meet as possible. And now that I've added the round over to the top of the enclosure, we are done with the woodworking for the enclosure on this bad boy. I'm really glad that I added this accent here. I think that's gonna add a lot of depth and dimension to the side of the panel. Obviously the top will be covered with the seat. And then I do still have an insert planned for right here. I have two more big videos to make as part of this project. For this insert here, I'm gonna be doing some edge lit acrylic. And then I have some special upholstery techniques that I need to do to the top of this enclosure to allow me to wrap it in two separate pieces. I'll be showing you guys the upholstery process and that edge lit LED panel in an upcoming video, so be sure to subscribe. Now you probably noticed that my voice is a little off in the beginning of the video and right now I'm currently fighting a cold, but hey, we got videos to make so I am pushing on through. Next time you need gear for a car audio system and you're not sure what fits, be sure to check out my friends over at Crutchfield they have a special offer for car audio fabrication fans. You can check out at the link here on screen or down in the video description. So a big thanks to them along with Ali, William, Marcos, Michael, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. And a big thanks to you guys for making this video possible. Oh, this cold. I hope it goes away soon. As always, my friends, thank you guys for watching.